it was totally overwhelming. There was um, this moment where after we previewed this teaser slash pseudo trailer thing, because there's so much more to come, um, today was just a taste. As soon as it finished, there was a, a roar from the audience that felt like being on, you know, behind the, 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 the jet, you know, of, of a plane. The energy of the voices that, that, that kind of hit your body was um, something I'll never forget. It was amazing. I have no choice. I was born in 1975. So um, these movies shaped our childhood. And um, from the stories to the toys. And uh, so I, I, I am an inevitable fan of uh, Star Wars. And so the meeting that I had with John uh, about this project and uh, being taken into a room that was wall-to-wall -wall story illustrations of the most, you know, Star Wars stuff that looks better than all the Star Wars stuff I've ever seen. <laughs> Sorry, but that's how good it was. And, um, and, and, and it's, it's surreal. It's a strange thing to be um, brought into something that's a part of your childhood imagination. Now that uh, streaming services are creating all this different kind of content, to be a part of the first um, Star Wars venture of that medium is phenomenal. Uh, I've already been blessed to be a part of some pretty amazing television. And so, um, yeah, this tops it. <laughs> I'm still sort of coming to terms with what's happening because uh, at the moment, it's, it's just a matter of receiving the love and joy that everyone is experiencing over something that is your job. So when I walked out and, and I saw everybody and, um, and got to say that I was the Mandalorian, um, I just hope I don't screw it up. <laughs> I mean, walking out to that kind of crowd with that kind of positive energy, I, uh, I haven't, I don't know if I've ever experienced that. And it was just, it was just this huge wave of just like, this is who Star Wars fans are. And I, I've, I've heard about it and I, I got a really amazing breath of fresh air in, in realizing that's what it is. <laughs> it's people that are just passionate about this wonderful, wonderful story that's been going on, you know, since forever, so I'm, I'm just like, I'm on a cloud nine right now. It was really, really cool to see um, like a lot of, like there was like a hundred Mandalorian helmets and they were all, had their helmets off and they were shaking in the air. Um, and then uh, uh, apparently a lot of our stormtroopers, the 501st were just there and them on set was really interesting because I thought it was just, you know, extra, ec extras, you know. And then they were like, no, all of these guys made their own outfits and we need we just wanted more stormtroopers and we called them and they showed up and it was like what they made their own outfits this is and they all looked like spot on like the passion behind it and uh i mean i've been hanging out with dave filoni and john farvro for like months now so i have understood like the intricacies of you know the armor and the blasters and like the characters and so i've been just been like it's just been a whole new world that's been opened up to me and um, and I hope that I can, like, I, I hope that I can just keep on growing that knowledge because I feel like I'm just a baby on the cusp of understanding it all. But I'm, I'm understanding it now, and I'm I'm really glad to be a part of the universe. <laughs> Jeez, we we made up one of the fight scenes the morning of, and um, I went into the makeup trailer before I had even gotten makeup d done, and I was just drenched of sweat, and they had three like you know, fans on me and they're like, cool her down so we can make her up so that she can go to the next rehearsal. And like, it was just, I mean, and then we just do incredible fight scenes that, you know, you can have the best fight scenes in the world, but if you don't have, have somebody who knows how to film it, then it, you, it gets wasted. And um, the fight scenes that I filmed in this, I'm gonna be excited to share with people. Uh, John and Dave are, first of all, so much unbelievable energy. They are so good together. 
both of them have this wealth of knowledge about the Star Wars universe. They're great filmmakers, uh, albeit David's thing has been, you know, as an animator, but still a great filmmaker. He was wonderful as a director on this. And John is just this, this like, he's like rolling thunder. I mean, he really is. He has so much knowledge going on, but he can walk in and address something like instantaneously that has to do with this. And many other things I might add, because I've heard John talk about the industry on so many levels because he was a board of the member of the DGA. I'm on the DGA and I've, you know. So I, it's just, um, it's wonderful to be involved with those guys and, and to be involved with something like this, this Mandalorian, this Star Wars part of the universe that, that is new and fresh and different and exciting and a lot of joy for a lot of people. The kind of energy that hit you was like a sound wave when people, when we walked on stage, when they showed the clips, um, it, was, it was pretty heady. And, and you know, at this point in my career, to be a part of that is just so juicy. <laughs> it's so good, you know? Um, I, I, could, I couldn't be happier. I really couldn't be happier. I've been to a few of these Comic Cons around, you know, and I'm always surprised with how much Star Wars lore, how much Star Wars cosplay, how many people make these incredible uh, costumes that they do, and how many of them gather together. This thing, though, is insane because it's all that universe, and it's all Mandalorian. So the amount of people, I mean, to be in there and have 7,000 people in that one, and then two spill-off rooms with 2,000 each, really? That's some love. <laughs> that's a lot of love for Star Wars, you know, and uh, Mr. Lucas and company, I'm telling you, that's, uh, that's amazing. So again, you know, for me, and to have my, my sons are both men now, but each have a son. So for me, for my grandsons to see me in this, there is cool. There is cool. You know, I, I can't wait until it's out and they can see it. For a streaming service to put the investment into the quality and quantity, as this is multiple episodes of a series, you know, and to have kind of unearth some, some unique and interesting part of this universe that hasn't been really uh, like put under the spotlight before, you know? Uh, the character of the Mandalorian, my character, Grief Garga, and uh, gosh, Gina's character, and, and um, uh, Giancarlo Esposito's character, and um, uh, Werner Herzog's character. I mean, it's just this, just this wild kind of band of interesting people that John Favreau has put together to be a part of this, you know? We always knew Celebration was coming, and, and then fortunately, yeah. you know, Dave's been here before. I'm a veteran, yeah. So we'd always <laughs> say, is this play, I know it would play at Comic-Con or it would play yeah. at D23, what plays in this room? And oh, we yeah. really just let it, you know, what David said was, look, they, they, everything we're doing and we're into, they're gonna get, like they'll yeah. know. So let's just show them stuff. Let's just show them what let we're them doing. Let them in. Yeah. Let them in. Yeah. Just let them in. And so there was a little behind the scenes stuff and there was just some scenes that played mm -hmm. out and then a little bit of a sizzle reel of stuff that was to come, early visual effects early, that were coming through because yes. we're still early in the process. But but it, this was, you were right, it was the right crowd to show yeah. this type of thing too. And, and it really felt, um, I liked how relaxed the whole thing, mm -hmm. the footage felt and and how how much how they really were responding to everything. Yeah. And and you know also with these types of things when they get super quiet because they don't want to miss They don't want to miss anything. They don't miss any I noticed lines. that right away. So they've gotten used to they, they don't use you just get to see as much sometimes as we showed them. Mm -hmm. And I think they appreciated it. But there was it's about giving everybody something that they like. Some people are very into the effects, some people more into the characters and we you try to represent that across the board, but really it's a very positive environment, Star Wars Celebration, and uh, they just want to feel like they're a part of this thing that they love so much, and so that's really what we wanted to give back was, yeah, this is for you guys. We like it. We hope you like it. We had a heck of a lot of fun making it with all our people, and I hope that, that feels like it's up on screen. The new Disney Plus streaming service is, uh, it, 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 when they 
decided that they were going to make Star Wars content for the small screen on the streaming service. There's a new paradigm that's evolving that kind of came out of the BBC format or the pay cable format, which is you can tell a, a certain number of chapters uh, per season, and those could feel like uh, not just episodes of a TV show that are, you know, we have like 22 or 23 of them, but, but more of a limited, more of a limited run. In our case, we're doing eight this season. And it allows you to, to break up the story into chapters as opposed to trying to tell a complete mm -hmm. thought. It's very exciting. I mean, for me, it's, it's kind of fulfilling a lot of my training that I got even dating back to George when I really started to get interested in the possibility of doing live action and working, you know, on a set with a crew. And, you know, Kathy would send me to the films like episode seven or episode eight or, you know, Rogue One. And, and I would sit on stage and watch and kind of, you know, learn from what the different directors are doing and their different styles. But the key for me really was having somebody like John present uh, to, to be mentoring on a regular basis and kind of showing me the ropes uh, really helped me, I think, accelerate what I was able to do. And since he, we knew each other, and he kind of knows, we, when you're writing, in the writing process and creating a story, you learn what people's instincts are as a storyteller. And so he would start to see some things that I would do, and he'd be like, that's cool, maybe try it this way. And it's all about improving and getting better as an artist with each thing you do. And I felt like each time I was doing something new that I could improve it and get it better. And you just want an up arrow in your career. And, and John really helped make sure that I was seeing up arrows and understanding the things that I would do differently as an animator, but really bringing those worlds together, especially with some of the technology we used, which was more also similar to animation. Bridge. Yeah, then it might not have been in the past. Yeah, so, so it, you, you know, using uh, Dave's level of experience, I think I think uh, live action directors, in, especially with effects driven films, would really be well served to understand or to apprentice with animators. This was my first Star Wars celebration. I've, I'm a I'm an old you know veteran of of Comic Con and D23, and they're both slightly different from one another. But celebration was something that I'd always seen, and it seemed bigger than life because of the cosplay and the prop building and the relationship and the community, the sense of humor in the cosplay, and also the appreciation of of the ongoing stories that are coming out of Lucasfilm and Star Wars. So for me, it was my first time. But Dave, he's, he's an old yeah. veteran. <laughs> I love it. I mean, the biggest thing I like is it's rare you have these uh, celebrations, conventions, where everybody comes together over one thing. And Comic-Con, you have almost feels like competing groups at times. And, you know, that's great. I like Comic-Con, too. But here, it's all Star Wars. And you see, like, a togetherness, like the sense of fellowship and camaraderie that you don't often get in kind of fan groups. Everybody gets along, everybody helps each other find exclusives or t-shirts or things from the store that they wanted and they all try to help each other get into panels and it becomes this this big festival of truly celebrating Star Wars. And that's what it's been. I mean, I've been at these things when George walks out on stage and you can't even imagine the thunderous mayhem that goes on when he steps out and I was there when, you know, they did the episode seven trailer and now to be here you know, the years with Clone Wars, but now something like this with Mandalorian, it, it, it's very exciting. And, you know, for me, again, each time I've come to one of these, it's gotten bigger and bigger, and the fans have gotten, you know, so many more. You see so many families now overall. It's every person from every walk of life at Celebration celebrating Star Wars. And that, that's something to really like, and it's a perfect place to bring something like the Mandalorian. I mean, it's not going to get better than this. Well, the thing that is amazing is that this crowd doesn't know anything about Mandalorian. And I think the fact that we were able to bring John Favreau, who is, you know, just about to debut Lion King and previously had done Iron Man and Jungle Book, and he's so beloved by this crowd. And then Dave Filoni, who has spent 15 years immersed in Star Wars, to bring the two of these guys together and have them create this show, I, I don't think there could be a better combination. Well, this show, Mandalorian, is actually going to launch the Disney Plus service. And I think, too, people don't know what to expect, and I think it has the size and scale and scope of anything that they might see in the movie theater, and yet it's now going to be live television. And that's something Star Wars has never done. So we're incredibly excited, and yet at the same time, Disney's incredibly excited to launch this new service. So it's, um, it's, it's, an, amazing, it's an amazing time for content.
for storytelling. I think that's, that's what we're all so excited about. Pedro <laughs> Pascal and Gina Carano, and of course, Carl Weathers. I mean, the combination of those three sitting up there with Dave and John, um, each one of them is just so embodies who their character is in Mandalorian. And I think the crowd just couldn't get enough. I mean, they're, um, they're personable and yet strong. I think when, when, G when Gina came out on stage and she'd never been to Star Wars Celebration before, and she has such an incredibly sweet and genuine persona, and then the first clip that comes up, she's just, you know, throwing this incredible punch. <laughs> I think it's, it's pretty great juxtaposition.